Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILOPathology.com. This is in continuation with the series on Pathology of Kidney. Today we will be discussing about the glomerular response to injury. In the earlier video, I had discussed about the uh, normal anatomy and functions of kidney and then we looked into various clinical manifestations of renal diseases. So, in the next 10 minutes, we will be discussing in detail about the histology of glomeruli and then we will look into what glomerular injury is and finally, we will see how this glomeruli responds to various injurious stimuli. So, this is the schematic diagram of uh, glomeruli. So, basically, you know that the glomeruli is composed of tufts of capillaries surrounded by a Bowman's capsule and this is the place where the filtration of blood takes place. The afferent arterioles carries the blood into the glomeruli and then the efferent arterioles takes away the filtered blood. So, this Bowman's capsule is made up of outer parietal layer and a inner visceral layer which are lined by podocytes. And then these capillaries are lined by endothelial cells. Note that these endothelial cells are fenestrated. And in between the endothelial cell and the podocyte is the glomerular basement membrane and that is the proximal convoluted tubule. So, apart from these cells, you also have mesangial cells. Within the mesangial matrix, these are the mesangial cells. The basic functions of these mesangial cells are, they are contractile in nature, they are phagocytic in nature, they do have proliferative potential. Whenever the glomeruli is injured, these cells also proliferate. They are the ones which lay the matrix and collagen and they also secrete mediators during inflammation. So, let us look into more details about the histology of glomeruli. So, the glomerular capillaries are lined by endothelium and this endothelium is fenestrated and beneath the endothelium is the glomerular basement membrane and this basement membrane is composed of type 4 collagen, lemonin, paran sulfate which is basically a polyanionic proteoglycan and it also has fibronectin and intact. The other cell is the visceral epithelial cell the most important function of visceral epithelial cell is synthesis of glomerular basement membrane components. Okay, So, this is a distal diffusion barrier which is size selective. Note that this visceral epithelial cell, because of these food processes, they have filtration slits. This is the ultra structural image of glomerular uh, filtration barrier. These are the fenestrated endothelial cells and that is a glomerular basement membrane. Note that this basement membrane has a central lamina densa which is more denser here and the peripheral lamina rara interna and then lamina rara externa. Now, let us move on to understand what are all the proteins associated with the visceral epithelial cells or the podocytes. The first important protein is the nephrine. This nephrine molecule is a transmembrane protein with the large extracellular domain. So, these nephrin molecules from the adjacent food processes dimerize across this slit diaphragm. So, within the cytoplasm of the food processes, the intracellular part of the nephrin, you know, forms a complex or molecular connections with the podocin. The other protein is CD2 associated protein. And finally, the actin cytoskeleton of the visceral epithelial cells. So, basically, there is a interplay between all these proteins for the visceral epithelial cells to function as an effective component of this glomerular filtration barrier. Why it is important to note all these things is, if at all, if there are any mutations involving any of these genes, any of these components, you know, genes coding any of these components, then there will be defects in permeability. So, and finally, once there is defect in permeability, there can be proteinuria leading to nephrotic syndrome. So, that is the reason why you need to understand the various proteins associated with these epithelial cells. What the normal glomerulus is permeable to? It is permeable to water and small solutes and this permeability is size dependent and charge dependent. Now, what do you mean by that? The smaller the size, the permeability is more, the larger it is less permeable. Whereas, charge dependent meaning the cationic ones are the ones which are more permeable as compared to anionic which is non-permeable. And remember, albumin is the one which should be absent in the glomerular filtrate. Now, let us move on to understand the concepts behind glomerular injury. Now, what is glomerular injury? 
it's basically a damage of glomerular filtration barrier which leads to proteinuria hematuria and decreasing renal function now let's look into what are the causes of glomerular injury so the i'll just briefly tell you what are all the causes it could be either immune mediated or non immune mediated immune mediated can be antibody mediated it could be cell mediated or it could be because of complement non immune mediated means it could be genetic factors as i told you defects in those you know genes encoding those visceral epithelial proteins it could be metabolic factors or it could be direct injury by means of either ischemia or toxic causes but remember immune mediated is the most important cause of glomerular injury now whatever is the cause ultimately what happens is there is release of inflammatory mediators and that and those inflammatory mediators are the ones which destroy the glomerular apparatus and this destruction can be either partial or complete finally leading to loss of filtration barrier okay so this is just a gist of the uh, causes of glomerular injury but in the next video i'll be discussing entirely in detail about the pathogenesis of glomerular injury now as of now just remember the injury is either immune mediated or non immune mediated now next we'll move on to how does the glomeruli respond to various injurious stimuli now the first important way it responds is hypercellularity the second one is basement membrane thickening the third one is hyalinosis and the fourth one is sclerosis let's look into each one of these what is this hypercellularity hypercellularity means the cellular uh, there is increase in the cellular component of the glomeruli and this increase could be because of either cell proliferation or cell infiltration now what is this cell proliferation means it could be proliferation of endothelial cells could be proliferation of mesangial cells or could be proliferation of epithelial cells whereas infiltration by definition means there is infiltration of the inflammatory cells which could be neutrophils monocytes or lymphocytes now whenever there is a proliferation involving these things the endothelial cells mesangial cells and all these inflammatory cells that is referred to as endocapillary proliferation because all these things are happening within the uh, confines of the blood vessel whereas the ones which involve the epithelial cells leads the formation of crescents the crescents are actually the semilunar shaped proliferation which is at the bowman's capsule we will discuss more about the crescents when i talk about uh, you know rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis later this is a histology of a normal glomerulus and you can make out that in I mean compared to this glomeruli this is a glomeruli which is hyper cellular and this hypercellularity is because of increase in the proliferation of the epithelial cells and also you can find these sprinkled inflammatory cells now you know the hypercellularity is due to epithelial cell proliferation or the endothelial cell proliferation or the mesangial cell proliferation and also infiltration of inflammatory cells the second one is basement membrane thickening so on light microscopy all you see is thickening of the capillary wall in electron microscopy what you notice is there is deposition of amorphous electron dense material and that's because of increased synthesis of protein components of the basement membrane and thereby forming additional layers of the basement membrane matrices so this is the histological uh, picture depicting the increased basement membrane of the glomeruli third one is hyalinosis so what is hyaline hyaline is basically a extracellular amorphous material made up of plasma proteins right you all know what hyaline is now on light microscopy hyalinosis is seen as homogeneous and eosinophilic material accumulation in the capillary loops okay and this could be because of endothelial or capillary wall injury basically what it does it it obliterates the capillary lumen okay now remember hyalinization is often seen in early stages of renal damage so this is the hyalinization of the glomeruli you can make out that there is accumulation of this eosinophilic material within the glomerular capillary basement membrane and within the capillary loops lastly the pathologic response could be sclerosis what is that sclerosis in contrast to hyalinosis here it is deposition of extracellular collagen matrix okay in the mesangium or in the capillaries where it results in hardening and fibrosis of the glomeruli 
Okay, it also obliterates the capillary lumen just like hyalinosis. Now, you should know that in contrast to hyalinosis, which was seen in early stages of renal damage, sclerosis is often seen in advanced stages of renal damage. Now, this is a sclerotic glomeruli. Look at this, completely replaced by collagenous material. This, this is a more normal looking glomeruli with a periglomerular uh, fibrosis. This is more or less sclerosed glomeruli, but this is a completely sclerosed glomeruli. Now, what did we see? We saw hypercellularity. Hypercellularity is it's an acute response. Whereas these three things, the pace from membrane thickening, the hyalinosis and sclerosis is chronic response. Okay. So acute response is hypercellularity, chronic response is these all three. So what did we learn? We learned the histology of glomeruli and then in detail about the response of the glomeruli to injurious agents. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries. Don't forget to subscribe and please do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.